is the loyal BBN fan. Look, never mind the um, the look. Uh, this is totally off the hook. I mean, this is totally off the the. I was listening to a um, um, to another show, and they got frozen, and they got they pretty much froze for the whole time. So I was like, hey, I got a show. I'll go live for a couple of minutes um, <clears throat> because the show was the show was basically off of, um, you know, recruiting um, the situation that we're in at Kentucky right now with the way we end the season with young guys. Now we got six more young guys that's going to be coming in, true freshmen. And now we don't know who's leaving and probably won't know who's leaving for a while, for at least until the end of – towards the end of May. We won't really, really know what our team would look like. With the transfer portal, with the way that it is, we don't really know really what's going to happen. We don't really know who's going to be here, who's leaving, who do we have to go out and get. The thing that I got from that team was this. The thing that I got from this team was this. I mean, that I got from what I was listening to on, on the other um, show – is that we got to get some guys in here that can really just straight ball. Like, we're in a situation where I think if we would have ended the season and went farther, farther in, into March instead of losing the first game with freshmen, I, I don't know if we will be having this conversation right now as far as, like, we have too many freshmen. I mean, it's, it's been something – it's been a discussion that we've had for a while now. Um, but I don't think it's that a – I think because of the circumstances that we're in, because of that, I really feel like that this is just a – it's a different state of emergency now for the – for the I mean, um, for the program. So with that being said, we got six freshmen in. Ain't nothing Cal can do about that. Like, we got to move on. There's nothing that we can be like, oh, Cal, can you tell somebody, you know, can you call up one of these kids and says, hey, I got to pull your scholarship because I got to go older. We all know one thing. Cal's not going to do that. And, and, and that's completely understandable. I mean, that's a that's a recruiting kill right there for the future. But moving forward, we got to go out. We got teams like Kansas, teams like that that are willing to just basically take a checkbook and tell a player, Put the amount you that you want on this check for you to come and play for us. And I think that's where we're at right now. And I think that's where Calipari is at right now. Calipari is good at going out and getting the elite five-star players. Is he good enough to go out and take some of these older guys who may look at Cal and says, Well, look at your record. I'm not really sure if I want to come there or not. You have these, you have all of these five-star studs coming in. How do I fit into your picture? This is when if Cal wants to be known as a solid big time recruiter, now his recruiting his recruiting has got to go to a different place now. It can't be, well, I can bring you into I can bring you into college, keep you here for one year, and I can push you out to the NBA. That's where I have you at. Now it's like, can I get an older guy, someone that has such so much experience of years of playing college basketball, that hey, that may have two, two a year, you know, two or so years left owner or worst name um, to be able to play college ball of eligibility. But at this at this particular time, Cal has to do whatever he has to do to go get these guys. If you remember, we lost on DK. He chose Tennessee over Kentucky. Cal's losing on these big time players that's that's in the transfer portal that's coming. Now granted, Tennessee didn't make it into the final four with DK, but they show had an opportunity to do it. We never even had an opportunity because we couldn't even get past the first game because we relied too much on the freshmen. That being said, Calipari's got to go get some guys, man. Like he's got to put his, he's got to go do whatever it takes, whatever swaggy Cal has to do to go persuade a guy that says, "Hey, you're you are a fit for my system. You are a priority. Yes, I have these freshmen coming in, but we need you." And that's how Cal has got to go sell it. There's no sugarcoating. We got six freshmen coming in next year. Six. We, we can't change that. None. Because we don't know who's coming back. So it makes it difficult right now for Cal to go sell for guys to come in. But Cal's got to go do what he's got to go do. And that's to get somebody in there that that's really wants to play ball. And if he can do that, 
to complement our young guys, I think I think it could be truly solid. I think it could be something really, really exciting, and I think that's what Cal has to go do. I don't think he really has a choice to be able to do that. Um, I haven't heard anything, um, Kim, I haven't heard anything about a do yet. So my, I like – for me – I heard someone say this comment. Cal, open up the book, the checkbook for a do to get a do back. Is that like I want to do back? Is it a matter of money for him, or is it a matter for playing time for him? Because once Trey came back in, then of course Theo had to go out. But right now, I don't really know. I really hope a do comes back because if he made such a jump from his freshman year to the way he did in his sophomore year, imagine what he can do from sophomore. To his um to his junior year, and that's experience. He's in the system. He understands it. Why not bring him back? Why not do what you can to actually get him back in the ball game? Uh, y'all want to hear something? I'm um, quick glazing, Cal. What do you mean, Cal fanboy channel? No, I'm not a fan. No, I'm not a um I'm not a fanboy of Cal. I'm telling Cal's got to go out here and Cal's got to do what it takes to get the right players. Cal, this is a very critical year for Cal. I'm not necessarily a Cal, a Cal fanboy channel. Not at all. When Cal screws up, go back and watch some of my videos. When Cal screws up, I call Cal out. I'm not going to sit here and just and just and just butter up the Cal. I don't have anything invested in Calipari. Calipari's not paying me. <coughs> He's not paying me to, to, to sit here and promote him, but he's he's our coach right now. What else are we supposed to do? Either you can say, you know what, I'm not rooting for Cal anymore, so I'm not watching the Cal, I'm not watching the the catch until Cal leaves. You can be that way. Or you could just say, you know what, Cal's our coach. What can we do to get behind him? What can we do to have the success for next year? And that means getting behind Cal and rooting him on so he can get our well, so so he can get our Wildcats back on track. But please. Don't get it twisted. I'm not. I'm not necessarily a Cal fanboy, but you. You, you never, never really watched me before, so <coughs> so it's okay. You excuse. You get a pass. Absolutely. But I'm not a. Uh, I'm. I'm not a Cal fanboy. But I believe in supporting who's ever at the leadership at Kentucky at that particular time. That's just what a true fan does. I can't turn my back on the Wildcats just because Coach Calipari is still the coach at, at Kentucky. Some people will agree with it. Some people want. That's that's what you know. People to to each your own. You know, to each his own. Whoever you believe in or whatever. All I know is, Cal's gonna have to go out. He's gonna have to tuck his pride, and he's got to do whatever he has to do to be able to to pull <coughs> two or three guys. If, if from the two or three solid guys, not just don't go out and just get at somebody because they're in a the transfer or portal. Go out and use your magic. Whatever it is you do to get these to get these five star guys to bite in and come to Kentucky, see if you can get the older guys to bite in and come to um, to come to Kentucky. Because this is what this is all about. This is look, Cal can't stay here forever. Cal's going to leave one day. It just is. And when Cal leaves, the Kentucky Wildcats will still be here. Period. This program is bigger than Calipari. Unfortunately, Calipari is the coach right now. We are leaving it up to Coach Cal to be able to go out and bring in the best product so Kentucky can have a chance to win and stop getting freaking beat in the first round. Stop leaving. Um, uh, stop losing to the Oaklands. Stop losing to the St. Peter's. Stop using, uh, uh, losing at home uh, uh, to UNC Wilmington. You got to stop that. That's what we want to see come to Kentucky. That's not Kentucky basketball. We don't lose to teams like that. Cal's our coach. We got to get behind him and we got to support. And we got to hope that he goes out and makes the right decision in order to bring the right guys in into it. That's all I really wanted to say. Uh, but I'm definitely not necessarily a Cal fanboy. And this is definitely not a Cal fanboy page. This is about doing what's right for the Kentucky Wildcats. That's what this is. That's that's what this show is all about. I want when 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 people when Kentucky wins, I want people to say that the Kentucky Wildcats won the national title. The Kentucky Wildcats and John Calipari. I want Kentucky to come before Cal's name. 
That's what I want people shouting. I want people to shout, go Big Blue. I want people to shout, go Cats. That's what I'm concerned about, not about go Cal. Cal's got his time. His time is limited. He ain't got a whole lot of time left. But Kentucky Wildcats basketball program will continue to thrive and continue to move well on when Cal is gone. People succeeded before Cal. People will succeed after Cal. But this is what we got right now, and this is all that we can do is continue to sit here and support Calipari why he has why he's the captain of this ship. That's all I know. I don't know anything else but to support the leadership, regardless if I agree with what they're doing or not. I just have to support the best way I can, and that's cheering on my Wildcats with the best ability that I can. But so something really, really funny, guys. I never, I'm almost 50 years old. I never sat on the floor like this. I'm sitting on the floor because I just moved into a new apartment. I, I'm going out this morning in a few hours to actually find me a table and everything so I can set up my, my computer and stuff. But I'm actually sitting on the floor and my feet are completely asleep. So I, I have to adjust my body because I can't even feel my feet anymore because I'm sitting, I'm sitting with my legs crossed. But this is very mm -hmm. uncomfortable. I'm probably going to have to call somebody to help me get up off the floor when I'm done. But it's always – whoops, sorry about that. It's always uh, – it's always fun to just come and talk Kentucky with Kentucky fans. It always is because you want to know why? Because Kentucky fans are just passionate about their Wildcats. We love what our Wildcats are capable of doing, but we're not happy with the way that it's been the previous seasons. The, the, the fan base, the, hopefully Mitch, the athletic director, everyone is demanding a better product on the floor with a more suitable ending. It may not be the championship, but it can't be losing in the first round. It can't be. We haven't. I mean, we got to get out of the second. I mean, we got to get out of the first weekend eventually. You know, we can't. We can't stay this way. We can't stay mediocre forever. We gotta. We, we gotta find a way to pull ourselves up out of this. Up up out of this madness that we're facing. And if Cal has one more year. To do that, then why wouldn't we as Kentucky fans, regardless of how we feel about Cal, regardless of how we feel about Cal, shouldn't we want to root him on? Shouldn't we want to be uh, uh, someone that says, go Cal, go do what you do, go do it at a high level, go get the best guys around in the transfer portal to come to Kentucky? To me, that only makes sense. I've been called worse than a Cal fanboy in my life. Believe me, I've been called worse. But that's what we're supposed to do as fans. You don't have to necessarily love Cal, but I think if you love Kentucky, then you can look past that and you, all you want to do is continue to just say, I want to see if Calipari can just do something to just make this team better, and that's by going out and actually getting guys that come in. Let me ask you guys about the um, – let me ask you guys about the about the coaching. It appears that Calipari is not making any coaching changes next year. It appears that everyone who's on the team, all the coaches, will be coming back next year. Do you think that's a good idea or a bad idea? Um, or is there still room for Cal to bring in another coach, particularly one that's really focused on defense? Uh, it looks it looks like from now anything could change. It looked like for now, maybe Kenny Payne won't be coming back to Kentucky. Uh, I'm pretty sure Cal and Kenny has spoken, but I'm not really sure if that's something that that they're going to make happen. Um, but you know, hopefully that's a possibility. Jade, uh, Jaden is 16 years old. Good showing. He had a really good showing last night, and I mean that's like like that's the story right now is that the kid is only 16 years old, and the kid is getting ready to walk into college and in just a couple of months, and he's guaranteed to be here for two years. Develop, develop, develop. And I think he's going to make a big difference from day one, but he's still he's, he's, he's still a young guy. Um, and I think having the leadership around him, I mean, even having DJ come back next year would be big. DJ, as, as everyone knows, DJ's got to get he, – he's got to go back – to using both hands. He can't just be a one-way guy 
when he, you know, when he wants to just go left. And he made some big shots going left last year. But think about this, think about what he could do if he would get comfortable and wanted to use both hands even more. I think he's a dynamic player, and one more year in the system would only be a plus for him. I just hope the thing that scares me most about these young guys is, is their pride. Is their pride. Coming out of high school, I'm this acclaimed guy. I'm 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 projected to be a high a high lottery pick when I come into college. This is just a this is just somewhere I'm gonna come in vacation for a couple of months and then I'll be off to the NBA. And when it don't go that way, does a player say to himself, I need another year? Or well, you know, that would be embarrassing if I have to come back to college another year after being projected such a high um uh, a lottery pick. Pride these days, man, has kept people, not just individual kids, but grown people from making smart decisions in their life. I just hope that somebody around him, maybe his, his, his family, his corner, the coaches, someone just says, it's okay to come back for a second year. I still got your scholarship. I'm not ripping it up and I'm not pushing you out the door. We can't expect what has uh, happened to our program. I still would love to keep Kenny back. Oh, I would. I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see Kenny back. Oh, absolutely. I would love to see. Uh, I would love to see Kenny come back to Kentucky. Why not? I mean, I don't think anybody would be like, "Well, I don't want Kenny back next year." Then I think you'd probably be crazy, considering what I know he would do for the Wildcats, even if it's just for the bigs themselves. Um, I would. I would love to see him come back next year. But the whole thing is. We just got to get people around Cal that Cal's going to listen to. And I think that's a real big issue right now is having people that Cal would listen to. And I don't know how much Cal listens to his assistant coaches, which makes no sense whatsoever because, first, <coughs> if I'm an assistant coach and no matter what I say to Cal, it, it doesn't do any good unless I'm just here for a paycheck or I don't understand Cal, like, why would you bring people in that you don't even want to listen to? I mean, Cal probably preaches to these young guys, put, put, get smart people in your corner who you can listen to, who can offer sound advice, but he's not taking his own advice, though. You see what I'm saying? Cal, you got to take your own advice if that's what you're giving to the kids. I mean, it's about Kentucky, and it's not about you, Calipari. You get what I'm saying? You got to get people in there that can help you. If, if the people are already in place, but you refuse to listen to them, then, Cal, you're the problem. Cal, you have to fix it. As the leader of the team, you have that ability immediately to get it fixed. It's only um, it's only if you want to. But I I have confidence in, in in next year, even though we got even though we are a young team still. I still um, um, I still believe that the Wildcats can get it together. Hopefully, we go out and we get some guys to come back. Hopefully, we get some good transfers in that can really come in and really. Be some dogs. You know, what about Michi from South Carolina? Now, people look at him and be like, well, he's he's not a big time necessary scores. His 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 stats and stuff ain't gonna jump off the page. But I think Michi from South Carolina, I think because of his mentality, because the way he plays the game of basketball and how aggressive he is, I think he would be someone that would be good into the program. But I guess if you can get Wagner back with him jumping from freshman to sophomore, a very small chance that Reed comes back. If Reed comes back, then you won't need probably Michi to come in because you'll have that locked down. But overall, we just got to get some leadership, man. Like we got to get some leaders because towards the end of the year, just like the, um, just like the guy said on the show, Antonio Reeves wasn't necessarily a vocal leader. Uh, Trey Mitchell wasn't the same after his injury. He was just trying to figure out how to get back in shape, trying to get back playing basketball. His confidence, he wasn't scoring. He was trying to worry about doing that. So him being a leader, it just it, it, it completely fell off. And that's the problem. We need guys down the stretch. To, you know, we need guys that I feel like if we would have had a little bit more leadership, which should come from Calipari, but sometimes it, that that leadership has to come within the ranks of the players. And if we would, if we would, if I think if we just would have had just a little bit more leadership on the floor with the guys against Oakland, 
I think we could have maybe found a way to win that ball game, but we didn't, and we just had freshmen that was out there just trying to figure it out. But Cal makes that much money a year. Cal, you better figure it out. Cal's got to figure it out. But if we got guys out there that got experience, guys that can know how to close ball games, then I think that can make the difference also going down the stretch. So we need that experience. And while we need guys who can be bruisers, while we got guys that can hit the board, I still think if you don't have a real strong leader on the team, then I think at the end of the day when you when you go through those bumps and bruises, it don't matter how many rebounds you're getting. If you don't have a true leader out there on the floor, then things can fall apart. And I think that's one thing when Cal goes out to find someone in the transfer portal, he needs to find someone that has true leadership abilities, preferably a point guard, someone because that's supposed to be the floor general. If he can get somebody like that, then you know what? That's even better. But he's got to get somebody out there that says, look, we're not losing this ball game. Calm down. We're not losing. We're going to pull ourselves together and we're going to win this ball game. And I think that's what we need. And I think if Reed comes back, I think Reed completely possesses that ability to be able to do that, especially in his second year in college. But once again, if we're being realistic, that's the long shot. Like that would be breaking news across the United States of America if Reed Shepard decides to return to college. There's been a few guys who have returned to college. And people will be like, okay, I can probably understand that a little bit. But if Reed announces he's coming back to college next year, I think that's going to be all over everywhere. And the question would be, well, why is he going back to college for? Only he knows, the coaches know, his family knows. And the catch would definitely be really appreciative if this guy can actually come back to Kentucky for one more year. Now, somebody wrote me and says, that is completely selfish of you to want Reed Shepard to come back to the um, um to come back to college. And I had to let him know I never advocated for Reed Shepard to come back to college. Yes, he had a bad, he had a bad exit game. And I'm pretty sure that's a game that will live with him forever. Especially if he decides to go off to the NBA and walk away. That would be one game that he will continue to think about for a long time to come. But at the end of the day, if he's a if he's a top three lottery pick. Hey, man, I'm out. I'll be watching you in the league. You can't get mad at the young guy for leaving. If he's going to be a top top one, top, I mean, anywhere between one and five, you can't be upset with him for leaving. I would tell the guy to go. But I would, but I would definitely be welcoming him back if he wanted to come back. But I can't really, I can't necessarily really, really, really hold my breath in hopes that he would be back next year just because he's just, he's, he's just that dude. And yeah, he had a bad game, um, but that one game won't shadow what he was able to do at least one year here at Kentucky. His numbers speak for himself, for sure. John Wall saw he should, he still thinks about the loss to West Virginia. Absolutely, like 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 this is not going to go away. And if he comes back, if Reed comes back, I think it's solely because of that. His dad was a champion. His mom was a – she was a dog when she was in college. I just don't know if he wants to leave it like that. I, I like, like I couldn't imagine. I mean, yeah, the dream is to, is, is to get to the NBA. There's injuries. You can get hurt. Any Anything like that. Anything's possible when it comes to I come back a year, the possibilities of it. Anything can happen. But you can – I mean – Come on, Reed. Come on back to Kentucky one more year. I'm going to just put that out there that I'm advocating for it. But I understand if the young guy goes and goes ahead and, you know, and, and go lives his dream. Why not? His dad played in the league. He wants to go play in the league. So, hey, if you can go play, why not? Uh, why not go get your thing or whatever? But, yeah, I mean, I think this is – this is while this is stressful to me, and probably a lot of more fans because we just we we continue to scratch our head. We continue to ponder on on why can we can't get past the first weekend. When are we gonna make it back to the Sweet Sixteen? When are we gonna stop losing to these little teams that we're not supposed to lose? Why is it two weeks later and we're still getting we still getting trolled by Oakland by their players? You know what I'm saying? Like like these are the kind of things that for 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 a Kentucky program for a Kentucky fan that's disrespectful, but. If you don't like it, beat them. And if we're not going to beat them, 
then a hey, shut your mouth and expect what is to come, and that's to be trolled by teams like Oakland just because of that. He's a top six in all mock draft. See? So, I mean, if uh, Daryl, if he's a top six, you can't be upset about that. As a fan, we can continue to be wishful. We could be wishful that you know that maybe, maybe that loss hurt enough that 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 just wants to bring him back where he wants to just show that hey, we're better than that, and I want to go out better than that. Maybe, but if not, hey man, I I I salute all the guys if if they feel like that this is the best thing for them in their life to go, whether we as fans agree or not, whether we can look at that and says, I'm not even a pro at what I do, but I can tell another year in college could benefit you tremendously, tremendously, it could benefit you. I wonder why Cal don't bring in some of the guys who actually decided to come back another year. Not many of them, but some of the guys who decided to come back. Bring them back in and just talk to them and just let them know, it's okay. You know, you'll get past You'll get past the fact of people saying that you was a one year bust and you know that you know that that you wasn't as good as 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 people hyped you to be coming out of college and whatnot. And once you get past that and you put on the uniform and you feel the love from Kentucky and you get out there on that basketball floor in your second year, oh I'm ready for this. Oh, let's go ball. Absolutely. Let's ball out. That's that attitude, man. Cause you can just see that. From year one to year two from a dude. A dude came out with his head up. He looked different in his second year. He looked like, I know what to expect now. I know what the grind's getting ready to be. I didn't know as a freshman. I didn't get a lot of time on the floor. I had a very short string with Cal. If I screw up, I'm coming out. Now I know what to expect, and I'm ready to ball. I'm ready to do my part. We didn't look for a dude to, to go out and score a lot of points, but his physicality is hard to replace. Because his motor was always going. And if we can get him back with maybe one or two more players like that, guys, with the with the with the with the talent that we got coming in, and maybe one or two more guys um um come back, I think we got a squad. I think we're 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 all around good in a sense of we got experience, we got uh we got some some stud freshmen, we got some dogs out there that can play ball. All around, I think Kentucky will be good. So as a as a fan, as I said, as a fan, all I can do is just get behind Cal and the coaches and just hope they're doing right, not for their image, but for the Kentucky Wildcat image. And, I, and to me, that's the biggest picture right there is just are you doing what's best for the Wildcats and not just for your name? I mean, you got your money. How much more money do you need? You got enough. If you quit, if they fire you tomorrow, they going to pay you a, a, a lot of money. So do what's best for Kentucky. Do what's best for Kentucky. And if you do that, you can sleep good at night. I promise you. Too many fans uh, have way too high expectations. Let me see if I can put this up on a fan show right here. JJ says uh, too many fans have way too many – uh, high, high of expectations. Reed might be the exceptions. I, for one, hope he returns and puts the NBA on hold. I wonder, like, okay, sorry about that. I wonder myself is really what's, well, it keeps coming back. I wonder myself is what's the, what's the, what's the expectations? And I wonder where we at as a fan base right now. Are we completely reserved? Are we just waiting I asked a question in, in, in that show, and I said, will the fans want to just push through? F-? Now, I'm excited about football season, so don't get me – don't get it twisted because I'm asking the question. But will fans, how the, considering how the season ended for basketball, considering we're looking forward to who's going to be on the team, who's leaving, are we going to get experience? Considering that, will some fans be in a hurry to get football season is over just to get back to right the ship for basketball season next year. I'm looking forward for football season. I'm, I'm not rushing it. Basketball season will be there. I'm trying not to get my high expectations up, but I'm also trying to stay as positive as I can. It's a long off season. It's a long time before, before they start bouncing the basketball in a sense. 
So I can't let myself get too high because that's where we've been at for so long. As a fan base, we want to we want to get we want to get hyped. We want to get excited about about our about our basketball team. But let's be honest, it hasn't really turned out great in the last few years. So we're we're investing a lot of time, a lot of energy on hoping that things can turn around for the Wildcats next year. But we got to have a little reserve. You know what I'm saying? We got to be like, well, well, hold on for a second. I can get excited. I even asked the questions about after watching the All-American um, basketball game, the McDonald games, do you get excited about the freshmen coming in or are you a little, still a little reserved? So many mixed opinions about the incoming freshman class. How excited are you right now? Will next year be a productive year? Will you support Calipari? Will you continue to just say, we're going to get this done? Or will you just say, I'm done right now? And I'm not going to cheer for Kentucky no more until Calipari is gone. Well, I say this about those fans. See you later, man. Deuces. Don't even worry about it. We don't even need you because screenshot it. When we win it next year, I don't want to see your name say go Cats. No, 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 no. You either stick with the Cats right now, even through as hard times as it is, you continue to stick with the Cats. As miserable as it is, you continue to stick with the Cats. As difficult as it is to look at Cal and say, Cal, what are you doing? As difficult as it is to say we need the coaches in it that's focused on defense, you still ride with your Cats. And you don't give up on them. You don't. Especially not based off just one person. As as it's been said, Kentucky's bigger than Calipari. It's bigger than Calipari. So once you – it is what it is, man. Everyone's free to cheer for who you want to. You're, cheer, you're, you're free to have your own opinion. No problem because, like, now it's nothing but an opinion. It's nothing. If you've been watching me long enough, you know I got to get I, – I, I have to get 30 to 40,000 steps every single day, five days a week. I have to get that many steps every day. I have to get up at 1.30 in the morning to get dressed just to get my day started, just so by 6 o'clock at night I can have my steps. From 1.30 a.m. to 6 p.m., that's the time frame that I have to get my steps. I got off the treadmill because Kentucky fans was on. And Kentucky fans, let's say talk, let's talk, uh, let's talk basketball. So I get off my treadmill and I come and I want to talk to the cats today. Because this is important to us, man. This is important. It's a Wednesday night. We could be spending time with family. We can be doing a lot of things, but we're passionate and we love our Kentucky Wildcats. What more can we ask for, dog? This is all we want, man. We just want to see Kentucky successful. And when the, when the time comes to talk Kentucky, you go talk Kentucky. Because that's what makes people smile. It just is. As a true fan, you got to continue to do that. So, um, facts. So, you know, you, as facts, you know what I'm saying? You got to go. Um, blue forever. Appreciate it, actually. Um, I'll, you know, for me, I'm always curious on where people are actually watching from. Um, if this is your first time watching me, I'm actually located in Kuwait right now. I know a lot of people know that already, but a lot of people, I, I, I'm getting new people watch all the time, so not everybody knows that I'm in Kuwait, but that's actually where I'm at right now. Um, I'm just always curious to see where people are actually uh, watching from. Um, that's very interesting um, for me. So uh, let me see, what is, uh, let me see what he's, what did they say? Greg says, I would trade half the incoming recruiting class for a fifth-year senior. <coughs> Greg, I think we all would. Now, let me say this, and because this has been on my mind as well, too. I think we all would, Greg. I think we all would trade some of the guys that's coming in right now for fifth-year seniors. Absolutely. The problem is, and we all know this, and I know that you're just making a statement, so this is definitely no – you in Louisville appreciate North Carolina – okay, uh, so North Carolina State. From Bowling Green, Kentucky, Kim. That's where my parents live at. Go Bowling Green. You know what I'm saying? Yes. I went to school in Bowling Green for one year. Sorry about that, Greg. Uh, I went to uh, um, I went to Bowling Green High for one year before going back and graduating from 
from Franklin Simpson um, in Franklin. So that's where I graduated high school from. So I'm actually from Kentucky. I am. Uh, but anyway, Greg, like I was actually saying, New, New York. Okay, that's where my wife is from. Okay, that's cool. My wife's from Brooklyn as well, too. Where Brooklyn at? Where Brooklyn at? You know what I'm saying? Where that at? Uh, my wife's from Brooklyn, too, as well. But my point to Greg is this. I thought about the same comment um, that you just made. And I'm pretty sure a lot of people feel the same way as well. The problem is Cal got these recruits before we got bounced. So at that time, while, while, while people still wanted some more experienced players in, I think because of the way that we got bounced and the way that now if you look who's in the Final Four with the experience they have, I think the thing of it is, is now it's more elevated. Now it's more serious than it was a couple of weeks ago. Now it's like it's urgent. Problem is, Cal's not going to go back and ask those guys to rescind their, their, um, their letter of intent. Cal's going to welcome them in. The problem is, is Cal going to win this year and possibly have another year next year so he can do it differently? If we, if we have a successful year, which not necessarily winning the national championship, but if we can make it to the Elite Eight, Final Four, why not? I mean, we're desperate right now, and that's sad as a Kentucky fan. But if, but if we can have a successful year and make a solid run and Cal comes back another year, then maybe Cal does it different next year. I wonder if Cal says, you know what? I'm only going to take three studs next year, three Three high-class freshmen, five-star freshmen. Everybody else, I'm going to go look. Hey, look at Arkansas. It didn't work. They went out and got upper-class guys and everything else, and everyone says that their coach is, is, is such a solid coach. It didn't work. They had a very mediocre year at best. At best. So I think everyone kind of feels the same. Hoptown, I actually live close to Hoptown. That's actually, <coughs> that's actually where my um, – my home is actually close to Hoptown right now. I actually live in, I'm actually living in Tennessee. That's, that's where my house is at, is in Tennessee. So I'm definitely close to Hoptown. I'm actually, I actually, Betty, I actually live in Clarksville. So I know you familiar with that. Is that you guys probably go up to Sam's Club in, um, in Clarksville once in a while. But, yeah, um, I think everyone feels the same way as well as that, um, is that we wish we had some fifth-year seniors some really skilled halfway um, uh, fifth-year seniors. Shout out to Louisville as well. A fun fact about Louisville is that, which I thought it would be Lexington, but as, as, as I look at the analytics from my shows and who's watching and where they're watching from, believe me, um, you know, because I've been gone from, from Kentucky for since, since 94, but I would kind of think maybe it would be Lexington. But Louisville... Louisville has a lot of UK fans because that's where a lot of that's where a lot of my followers come from. That's where a lot of listeners listen from is from Louisville. So for me to see that, like you got Lexington in the graphs, and then you got Louisville way up here. So it's a significant difference. But Bowling Green being in the house too as well too. I'd be like, okay, Bowling Green's watching. So that's awesome. So as 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 you can see, yeah, muscle man, yeah, uh, you're right. I think the value of true freshmen is is diminishing um, a lot. Um, yeah, there's actually a lot of Louisville fans as well, too. Um, hey, by the way, if you guys have, if you're watching for the first time and you never subscribed to my YouTube channel, please, please hit that subscribe button for me one time. Um, um, that is not why I came on here was to get subscriptions. Me, I had a chance to come here and just hang out. I don't have any UK fans here that I talk to. So every opportunity that I can have to be able to go live and be able to just talk to to fans like myself. I'm just a fan. I'm just I'm nothing but a fan. I don't have no ties to the team. I don't have no inside like let me give you some inside news. Don't tell nobody. Some I don't have any scoop. I don't have anything. I'm just like you guys. I'm just a simple fan who loves the Kentucky Wildcats and wants it to be successful and even if that means rooting for a coach that maybe we don't want. Maybe that Maybe that a lot of the fan base don't want. We don't want Calipari. Even if that means just continue to support in any way that I possibly can 
then I'm willing to do that. I'm I'm really, really sincerely okay with doing whatever I have to do my little part. Cause I'm only such a I'm a, such a small, I'm I'm only such a small, small piece of the puzzle. You know, small. And if you if you you gotta squint your eyes to even see me. But I love my Kentucky Wildcats. And I'm going to continue to ride with them no matter what, no matter what it looks like. Because even the sun will shine again on the Kentucky Wildcats. It's just not shining as fast as we as true Kentucky fans may want it to shine. But believe me, it's going to shine again. It's, it's going to shine again on Kentucky. And we'll be back on top of the world sooner than later because we're built like that. And I feel like we're going to get back to that with or without Calipari. We're going to get back, as they say, to the mountaintop of college basketball and being that standard. Kentucky basketball is everywhere. It is. You know, me being here in Kuwait, my schedule, my schedule is not bad, but I, I keep my schedule where I just get up, I work out. I'm so tired from, work, from working out and walking all day long is that once I get off from work, I don't really mingle a whole lot. Um and the guys that I do know that don't work with me, that's like good friends, like they're on different work schedules to me. So on my off day, they're all working. So I spend a lot of time all by myself. So this right here is, is what brings me joy is to be able to just go live and just be able to just hang out with other fans and just talk Kentucky um, for sure. You all aren't being very real, realistic. Can you can you elaborate on that? You all aren't being very being realistic about what being realistic that that we can't give up on the Wildcats even though we having a bad year. Y'all, uh, we play Duke in the Champions Class transition. That's gonna be exciting. Like if you want to draw the fan base back in, you gotta win this ball game. You gotta beat Duke. You beat Duke. You give hope. You give hope. It just is now. We had hope last year. It didn't go as the, the, the way we wanted to after beating North Carolina. But we can get it back together. But we got to beat Duke, though. And I think because, you know, beating Duke would be bigger than beating North Carolina just because we don't like Duke at all. And even though we don't necessarily like Carolina, we don't necessarily hate Carolina like we do on a level with Duke. So beating, so beating Duke in that champion classic would be something really, really big. The young Wildcats finished second in the SEC. Big win, uh, big wins against. Where's this at? Who said that? Jay said that. No. Uh, who said that? You, you all aren't being very realistic. I want to hear what Jay means. Big win against Tennessee, Alabama, North Carolina, and Auburn. Um, someone said. I got to go back and follow up. And my apologies for this, but. Was that spam or did he decommit from um, from Duke? I, I see that online, but believe me, everything online is not true whatsoever. So I haven't had a chance to actually verify that. But someone said that he actually decommitted from Duke. I haven't seen, you know, I figured that would be bigger, bigger news if that was the case. But um, I, I saw that he decommitted from Duke. I'm not really sure how that is. But, hey, <clears throat> we can't let one person beat us. We just can't. I don't. I don't. You know, he's the, supposed to be the best guy in the in recruiting class. He's 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 top. He um he's top tier. But I don't think uh flag. I think it's flag, flan, flag. Maybe April. Maybe so. Maybe it was April Fools. Cause I'm not, maybe it was on April the first when I actually saw that. Now that I'm thinking about it, that's pretty. That's pretty interesting, Greg. I appreciate that. Maybe that's when I saw that. Maybe maybe fools, I think. But it doesn't matter because, see, if, if if you come to Kentucky to play basketball, you should come to Kentucky expecting to play those big time teams. Don't come to Kentucky to play these little these little teams. Hey, but we losing to them, so maybe we don't want to play the little teams, and maybe we do want to play up to our talent, so we'll be motivated. To actually really play the ball game, but uh, but maybe we shouldn't. Uh, maybe we shouldn't want to play the little teams because they seem to be the one who's always knocking us off. Uh, I'm also in Hopkinsville. I was uh, ready for a coaching change, but with Cal back, I'm still all in. I root for the kids who want to play for Kentucky. Me too. I root for the guys for the kids 
who wants to play for the name on the front of their jersey. And if Calipari happens to be the coach or anybody who happens to be the coach, then I get behind the name on the jersey, and that's Kentucky. And, you know, I can't – I'm not big enough. I don't have $33 million to buy out Cal. So I can't just walk into the office and say, Cal, you're gone. Here's your money. Take a walk. I can't do that. I don't have that kind of money. So all I could do – all I can really do is just continue to just root for him. Either that or just pull what little hair I got out. And I don't have a whole lot of hair. So I just gotta I just gotta get behind whether whether I like it or not. I just gotta get it out. Uh Boogie Flynn um is a UK recruit. He is. And he looked good. He he actually he actually hit the um the um the go ahead basket in the all American game to win the game. Um night before. Because it's Wednesday night in the States. It's Thursday morning here. So actually, what time is it? It's 5.15 in the morning. So the sun should be coming out here soon. And I can get I can continue my my stroll. But I think it's a uh, um I think it's exciting. I think the fan base is definitely watching every single move that John Calipari does. I think, you know, of course, when it comes to to recruiting um in the portal. We're watching to see who's leaving. I think this is one of the most anticipated. I think this is one of the most anticipated off seasons in Kentucky basketball in many, many years. And I think it's only because of how we ended the tournament. And I think people want to see that Calipari is doing everything that he can. Christian Reeves decommitted from Duke today. Ooh, yeah, but he's is he a freshman though? Center Christian Reeves um, decommitted from Duke, but he's a freshman, though, right? If we, um, it will be interesting to see how Cal handles. It will. It, I mean, everything, everything that. <coughs> sorry, everything that is, everything is magnified to a certain level this year, especially right now. Like losing the way we did in the tournament, it just it it changed. Everything like COVID, like nothing's the same anymore. And I think while we was leaning that way because we haven't been successful, that was the tipping point of, of, of Kentucky basketball. That was the tipping point of what Coach Calipari better do, the changes he better make in order for next year to be successful. Better be because – Everyone is sitting on the end of their seat, and we're going to critique every single thing that Calipari does until we get back on the floor all through next season. Everything from subbing, everything from recruiting, everything from, from just being fair across the board towards the players, calling timeouts, um, stopping runs, like all that kind of stuff. Cal, where's your head at? How calm are you on the sideline from now on? Every little thing Calipari does moving forward, I think that we all are going to be watching with a microscope to see if Cal truly does have the best interest of Kentucky and not just sending guys off to the NBA. Is that going to be what he really wants to do? Um, I couldn't believe when someone said it's been since 2019. Um, yes, he's a red shirt freshman. Okay, would you take him, Daryl? Is is he a kid that maybe you might want to go look at? Um, Boogie has to work on his body. We, I mean, we got small guys coming in. I mean, he's another he's another small guy as well too. Um, is is he? Do you do you think Boogie's going to be better than than Dillingham? Considering did. Did, did people really believe that Dillingham was going to come in and be as good as he was? I mean, let's think about it. It wasn't Dillingham. It wasn't Reed that was really hyped up. It was the two guys who who had subpar years, and that was Wagner and um, Edwards. Those two guys came in that was very, very – and um, what's the name? That was very, very hyped up. But those guys didn't live up to the hype um, that they were supposed to. So – COVID year was a nightmare. Remember Cam Fletcher crying on bench about playing time? <laughs> yeah, it's, it was a lot of things that was going on. That, uh, I remember that, Daryl. <laughs> Cam, it was a lot of things that was going on. And um, things things in the world 
just won't be the same after the COVID year. Um, just like after this loss, I don't think it it just it it it, it won't be the same. And major upgrades, major changes definitely have to uh, have to be in place in order for the fan base to be sold on Kentucky moving in the right direction. Global Jam, Dillingham got humbled. <laughs> um, but, you know, no one – I mean, no one expected Dillingham to come in and have the year he did. No one did. And he came in and just straight balled out. And maybe that's what Bookie's going to do next year. No one knows. We just got to wait and see. But I hope Cal has – for me, it's about physicality and leadership. We got to get some leadership in there on, on, on the team. We can't expect those young freshmen, especially the 16-year-old, we can't expect him to come out and be a leader. Like, this is all brand new. What's he going to do when he go on a true road game? What's he going to do when he steps into, into Tennessee's um, um court? What's that crowd going to be like? Like, we got to get some experience in there. We got we to gotta get guys in there that can go into somebody else's house and be like, quiet down, quiet down, we here. And, and we're going to shut the crowd down, and we're going to take them out. That's it. The same way we did this year um, against Tennessee when we went there. We, we took the crowd out, and they never could get into it. We need guys that's going to come in and that's going to help us do that on another level. A nightmare was was when that um, 1,000 came out um, of that envelope, and and UK was placed on probation. <laughs> I think that was a long time ago, wasn't it? Yeah, Travis Perry needs – oh, we, and look, we got all these guys coming in. We're not even really talking about um, Travis Perry. Like, where does Travis Perry fit into all of this? Is he somebody that Cal is going to look at Reed and says, okay, it worked out with Reed. He's, 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 he's from Kentucky. Let's see if it's going to work out with Travis Perry as well. I mean, you can't deny what Travis Perry is doing in high school – you got to think that some of that is going to be able to translate over to the college level. You can't just take a shooter like that, a baller, and just say you're in college now. It's, it's just not going to pan out. You can't. So Cal's got to find a way to play him as well. I tell you what, I wouldn't want that job. Pay me thirty million, pay me as much money as you is with Calipari, and I deal with that problem. But that's a big problem because now you got to fit all these guys in, and you can't um, you can't neglect them. <clears throat> Greg, it's funny to think a 17-year-old can be playing against someone seven or eight years older than, than them, and it's about to happen. It's, it's, it's about to happen in just a few months. In just a few months, he's going to be out there on the floor, and he's probably going to be starting. He's he's probably going to start. I mean, I, I, it would be crazy to think that he wouldn't start next year. Anything can happen. But he's going to be playing against those older guys, and those older guys are going to be like, look, dude, I'm going to body you. I'm going to take it to you. You don't have enough. You're too young. You're too small. Let me show you how to play college basketball. And things like that, you just have to say, is, 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 is he going to have enough is to be able to do that at his age as well too? Um, I think the real player that is being overlooked is Billy Richmond. Billy Richmond is a baller. <laughs> the C – the whole point of this is, J.J., is that Cal is going to have to go out and convince – he's going to have to go out and convince these, these older guys that I need you in my system. Yes, I have these superstar five stars, but I need you in my system to help level it out. That's, the, that's, the, that's what we're waiting for. We're waiting to see, like, I mean, think about it. If you're an upperclassman and a coach that just got six, six basically five-star players to come in, almost if 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 he got all these high these 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 high caliber players to come in, why would I want to go play in a program like that when Calipari is going to take care of his five-star players? Why would I want to go be in? This is when I need Cal to be that extraordinary recruiter because he needs to find a way to say. I'm going to wiggle you in there, and then I'm going to entw- entangle you into what's going on with the Wildcats. That's how I need you. Can he do that 
We know he's a master recruiter with persuading guys five stars to come in, but can he do just enough to get those to get a key few players in the transfer portal to come in and says, buy in, I'm going to play you with these guys, and I need you. Uh, Daryl says, uh, the only thing with these age conversations is that these are one-and-done caliber talents. If, if you can't beat Oakland seniors, you're not ready for NBA. Grown men, no boys allowed. And see, that's – I did – I did my show at the at the end of the year, once we lost to Oakland. I did that show. And one thing that I said is it wasn't out of anger. It wasn't out of anger. It was based off of the fact of you're playing a ball game as a freshman against these older guys as seniors, but you want to take your talent you get completely dominated by these older guys, but you want to take your talent to the NBA where these dudes are real. These dudes are these dudes are physical and they're real. So how are you gonna go from getting dominated completely clueless to going to playing in the NBA just because you want to think you're ready? That was my whole point with that comment. When I made that earlier at the end of the season. Got to be physical, man. You do. do. Now, freshman guys, they go to the NBA and they succeed. It ain't like guys go to the NBA as a freshman and don't and don't go ball out. Of course, they, it happens every single day. I'm just saying, if your mentality is not being tough, Maybe you might want to come back and maybe see if you can work on that mentality and that and and your physical and your physique of your body, just so you can get ready for that. Because it ain't gonna get no better. Because you don't hear about nobody from Oakland talking about, yeah, man, this guy's gonna get drafted. He's gonna be a lottery pick. Oh yeah, he's 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 oh yeah, he's outstanding. You don't hear about none of those guys. Those guys, they just want to play gritty, down hard basketball. And that's what the NBA is going to do. Now, I know NBA don't play a lot of basketball. They don't, they don't play a lot of defense until the playoffs come. I get it. But you still got to be able to be a little physical. You still got to be able to do a little bit. You just do. You you have to, you know what I'm saying? You just have to say that. Absolutely. But, you know, we you, you play with grown men. It's as simple as that. And these dudes are big. And these guys are getting paid to play a ball game at a high level. So, they hear about the hype. They hear about you coming to the – oh, he's coming to the league? Oh, that's a rookie. Okay, let's take it to him. Now, granted, back in the day, for some of us older folks who remember the – you know, when a foul was is when your, is when someone took your, took your nose off, then that was a foul back then. But now you just get called for a foul if you touch somebody the wrong way. Oh, you hit my finger, so you, so you interrupted my shot. Come on, man. Get out of here, dude. For real. It ain't too real. It's not the real NBA that it used to be. But at the end of the day, you still have to be physical. And you still have to want to, to have that mentality that I got to be physical every single game. And I can't get rattled. I think we got rattled as freshmen. I really do. What are you going to do when you go into some of these NBA arenas? Uh, arenas? You ain't going to get rattled? Really? You're going to get rattled. That's okay. You're young. It's expected. Don't worry about it. Don't be offended. Just come on back, get a little better, get your mind right, and go play ball. It's that simple. So um, you really have to, for real. I mean, that, that's like like that's real. So look, guys, I appreciate all of you. Uh, this is the first time that I've ever watched a, a somebody else's show, and I just jumped on and did mine too because everything kind of just froze up for theirs. Uh, but I appreciate each one of you guys coming on. Like I said, what I say is my opinion. It's not going to be for everyone. Everyone's not going to agree with me. Just don't call me a cow fanboy. I'm a I'm a, I'm a Kentucky fanboy, if that's what you want to say. Yeah, but I'm not a cow because cow's time is limited. Cow's leaving soon. Period. So, you know, this is uh this is kind of what it is. But once again, hey, if you have not Follow me here on YouTube. Please hit that subscribe button. I appreciate it as well, too. 
Thank you, guys. Go Cats. Let's see what happens. We're all watching. Uh, I'm trying to go more frequent about one or two times a week here. Um, I'm not big time like these other shows. I don't have somebody behind the scenes that can throw up graphics. What you see is what you get. I just, I just got to be me. And the way I be me is, is just telling you what I feel. I don't have anything in necessarily. I'm not connected to the program. I don't have any. I do have an NIL deal with, with autograph. And if you ever, if you never heard of it before, it's an app that I would put my link in this as well too. I go back and uh, I'll put my link in it, but um, it's an app that we have that is, it is on steroids for Kentucky. It is a, it's one app called Autograph. I'll put my link in there. If you do it, everything is all in one place for Kentucky. All your podcasts, all your shows that you follow, it's all up under one simple app. And you ain't got to keep going back and forth to show, to show, to show. You can just get everything you need right there on the Autograph um, app for sure. Um, it's really, it's really, really that good for sure. But, hey, thank you guys once again. I appreciate it. For you guys jumping in, if it was your first time, thank you. I appreciate it. I'm very, very thankful for you guys taking the time out to listen to me. You guys have been watching the Loyal BBN Fan Show. I'm your host, Mike. Until next time, yo, I'm out.